Right guys, welcome to this video on the muscular system. Uh, we're going to spend a bit of time in this uh, this video thinking about the three types of muscle that are present in the human body. They're present in sort of varying proportions uh, and we'll talk about that briefly in a moment. We'll, we mainly want to focus in on the structure of the muscle and especially uh, the functions and characteristics of these different types of muscle. So the first muscle we're going to look at, or well, the first type of muscle in the human body is cardiac muscle. And you'll know from the word cardiac that we're talking about heart muscle. And very specifically, cardiac muscle is, is predominantly found in the central layer of muscle within the heart. So not the outside layer, not the inside layer, but the central layer of muscle within the heart. And that has its own specific name that is known as the myocardium, the myocardium. And that's the only place really where cardiac muscle is found. So what are the characteristics of this, um, this cardiac muscle? Well, the first thing is that it's involuntary. And what we mean by that is when it contracts, it does so without having to think about it. So it's outside of conscious control. It actually controls or is regulated by its own impulse system. And any muscles that do this, we refer to as myogenic. Or the contraction, at least, we refer to as a myogenic contraction. And so we'll look in a later video at exactly how this works and how the electrical impulse system of the heart works and how it sends signals throughout the cardiac muscle. But for now, just remember, the cardiac muscle itself is not consciously controlled by the brain. It's involuntary. Secondly, in terms of the structure of the muscle, the muscle itself is striated, it's striated, which means it comes with stripes. And we'll talk about what those stripes are uh, at a later stage in this video when we, when we get to skeletal muscle. But it's striated and the structure, um, to continue with the idea, the structure of the muscle, the structure is also branched. So we don't have lots of long, thin, straight muscle fibres. Actually, they branch off and make links and join with other cardiac muscle fibres. And there's a very specific reason for this. Because this allows, when the electrical impulse is generated, this allows that electrical, electrical impulse to be dissipated or disseminated or spread out through the myocardium much more quickly. Rather than being sent specifically along one muscle fibre or one group of muscle fibres, actually that electrical impulse spreads out much more quickly across the muscle um, the cardiac muscle fibres, and also in three dimensions. So not just along and across, but also down and within so that the contractions can be um, faster and um, more intense, which is helpful for um, getting our heart to beat faster when we need to for exercise. The next thing about it, um, which is a, a particularly essential feature of cardiac muscle, is that it is non-fatiguing. And that simply means that it doesn't fatigue, it doesn't get tired. Uh, and that's obviously very important and very helpful for obvious reasons, um, because you don't want your heart uh, to just give up. You want it to continue to beat and you want it to do so without you having to think about it. So this cardiac muscle, it's involuntary, it does it of its own accord, contracts of its own accord. It's striated and branched in appearance and it doesn't fatigue. It just continues to beat under its own steam, as it were. The second kind of muscle uh, we could do with knowing about is what we call smooth muscle, smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle um, is mainly found in... Um, in the hollow organs and passageways of the body. So for example, the digestive tract, which is a passageway, the bowel, um, arteries and veins, the bladder would be a good example of a hollow organ. Okay, so these hollow organs, these passageways are predominantly made up of smooth muscle. And in smooth muscle, what we find um, is that contractions tend to happen relatively slowly um, so that the contraction itself can be passed and moved around or along that smooth muscle. So um, what's, what's significant about smooth muscle is that individualised um, structures, individualised organs, utilise smooth muscle in slightly different ways. So let's take just an example, because like I say, the, the functions of smooth muscle tend to be quite individualised. But if we take the smooth muscle of the esophagus, so that, that pipe that runs between the mouth and the stomach. The esophagus is made up predominantly of smooth muscle. And so when that smooth muscle contracts, it, it contracts in a wave-like pattern, a wave-like sequence. So from the top, it squeezes downwards towards the stomach. 
And you'll probably be able to work out why that's the case, because when you chew some food and swallow it, you need that food to move in a particular direction. And so when we have this wave like contraction, it's essentially pushing behind that chunk of food and pushing it down towards the stomach. Now, that chunk of food is known as a bolus, bolus. Uh, and the, contra the contraction pattern, this wave like contraction pattern that pushes the bolus down into the stomach is known as peristalsis peristalsis so we've got peristalsis um, going on in smooth muscle in many of the um, the hollow organs and particularly the passageways and especially in this example in the digestive system to move things along to move things along the so digestive tract a great example now the smooth muscle itself is non-striated um, that is it doesn't have the stripes that cardiac muscle has and it certainly doesn't have stripes anything like skeletal muscle has which we'll mention in just a moment um, the, the next thing to know uh, about, the, uh, about the smooth muscle um, is that it's under, again, similar to cardiac muscle, it's under involuntary control. So it's controlled independently by the nervous system. So you don't really have to think too much um, about the passage of your food through your digestive system. It occurs without you having to think about it. Okay, so uh, we've got the fact that smooth muscle is involuntary. Um, its contraction is relatively slow. They're very individualized functions depending on where we find this smooth muscle. Um, it's also non striated. So those are sort of the key features of smooth muscle. And then moving on finally to skeletal muscle. Now, um, skeletal muscle, as the name suggests, is for movement of the skeleton. And that's why we sometimes refer to the concept of the musculoskeletal system, because the muscles and the skeletons work in tandem, work hand in hand. Um, so to speak. So the skeletal muscle is the muscle that um, helps us to move our skeleton to get about. And it's actually the most common uh, type of muscle out of these three types in the body. Um, and it makes up approximately, depending on the size of your muscles, of course, it makes up approximately 40% of the body's overall mass. So about 40% of the body's overall mass is skeletal muscle. So what do we need to know about skeletal muscle? Well, the first thing is, in distinction to the other two types of muscle, is that this muscle is voluntary. That is, you do have brain control. You do have conscious control over the movement of your muscles. Um, and so these are the sorts of muscles we use to um, produce movement, to play sport, um, to jump and to run and to throw and to kick and so on. These are the muscles we have conscious control over. We tell them to move and they move. Um, the second thing to note is that these are striated and, and you can probably just about make out on the diagram the very clear lines of striation in the muscle. We're not going to talk too much about what those striations are except to say um, that skeletal muscle, in the way that it contracts, there is a sliding past um, of the, from, from one end of the muscle to the other end of the muscle. The fibres of that muscle slide past one another. Uh, in order to um, bring the muscle to contraction, to concentrically contract the muscle. And again, we'll, we'll flesh that out. We'll, we'll add some context and, and content to those ideas in later videos. Um, but the striations just uh, indicate that this muscle can slide past itself, if you like, it slide within the muscle fibre to bring both ends of the muscle fibre closer together to create movement. Um, the next thing that we need to note about skeletal muscle fibres is that it's organised into bundles um, and those bundles are supplied by blood vessels um, or supplied blood by blood vessels and innervated um, by motor neurons. Um, again, we'll talk about motor neurons and blood supply and so on in a later video. Um, but let's get into a little bit more depth just on skeletal muscle, just for the last minute or so here, and introduce you to some of the technical terminology that you'll need to be comfortable with and confident about in terms of the structure of skeletal muscle. So there are loads of technical, na technical names that we need to know about skeletal muscles, but let's just start with a few here. Um, so the skeletal muscle, as we know, attaches to bone. Okay, so skeletal muscle attaches to bone, that's the, that's allows the skeletal muscle to move the skeleton and it attaches via a tendon. Okay, so the attachment, the sheath that runs around uh, the muscle itself uh, forms a tendon which then attaches to the bone. Um, the muscle itself, the, the overall muscle, the, the, the whole muscle, um, that's the central part of the muscle we know as the muscle belly. So it's the chunky bit, the round bit, the, the largest part of the muscle is known as the muscle belly in between the tendons at either end. Uh, and then the muscle belly is made up of uh, groups 
um, that are known as muscle bundles. Now the technical term for that is fascicles, fascicles. So each fascicle, so in the example on the screen, there are, you can see there are several fascicles that, that join together within one muscle um, to, to form that muscle belly. Now a muscle bundle, if we, we're scaling down, we're, we're kind of um, getting smaller and smaller as we go. A muscle bundle is made up of a group of muscle fibers, a group of muscle fibers. So depending on the muscle and the need for accuracy of control of the muscle, you might have more or less uh, muscle fibers, uh, muscle fiber content within each fascicle. And um, the larger, chunkier muscles, the ones that are from big, gross movements, tend to have lots of fibers per bundle. Um, and the and the muscles that are in charge of sort of delicate, fine movements tend to have far fewer. And each muscle fiber, if we go down even further, each muscle fiber is made up of what we call myofibrils. Myo, so again, there may be several myofibrils that make up a muscle fiber. Um, and then again, one more step downwards, um, at least for this video, we could go further, but at least for this video, we're going to go one more step downwards and we're going to note that the myofibrils are made up of what we call filaments, filaments. And we'll talk in another video about what those filaments are and how they work. And as I mentioned earlier, how they help the muscle from uh, slide past one another. The, the myofibril um, has these filaments that slide past one another. You may have heard of sliding filament theory, for example. OK, the other thing that we need to note is that each muscle uh, has its own blood supply. And that's essentially to keep the muscle uh, supplied with oxygen in particular and to remove carbon dioxide and we'll talk about that in detail in one of the respiratory system videos then finally just to just to conclude this section let's just um, identify the names of the sheaths that run around each of these sections of the muscle so around each section of the muscle to keep the myofibrils the muscle fibers the fascicles and so on to keep them together and, and keep them from kind of wandering off i suppose um, there is a sheath around each one keeps them in place um, the sheath around the muscle fiber the muscle fiber level um, is essentially made up of the same stuff that the that the, um, the tendons are made from um, just to keep that muscle fiber contained and keep it running in the right direction and so on um, the sheath around the muscle fiber is known as the endomysium the endomysium then muscle fibers surrounded by the endomysium joined together in, in chunks to form a muscle bundle that muscle bundle has, a, has also got a sheath around it and that sheath around it is called the perimysium the perimysium so the endomysium goes around the muscle fibers and then we have a bunch of those together uh, and they're held together by uh, in, in a fascicle by the perimysium and then we have these fascicles uh, these muscle bundles and they're held together by another sheath that runs around the entirety um, of the muscle belly and that is known as the epimysium the epimysium so it goes from the smallest to the largest it goes endomysium around the fibers perimysium around the fascicle and epimysium around the whole muscle belly and that just keeps that muscle in place contracting in the right direction and so on um, to ensure that when the force is produced through the muscle, it's pulling in the right direction on the bones. Well, that's the end of this um, first video on the muscular system. I hope that's been helpful in getting to grips with the different types of muscle. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.